Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can mount either a staghorn fern or in fact any type of epiphytic plant onto a block of wood like this. It's honestly the easiest and the simplest thing in the world to do. You can get them up on the wall. They look really, really beautiful. And it also helps to mimic that plant's natural growing conditions as well. So yes, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it useful. Let's get into it. So what you will need, I'll link everything that I used down in the description box below, but you will need something to mount your plant onto. I've just found these wooden rungs and I got them on Amazon. I really like the look of them, but you can use pretty much any wood you like, so long as it's not treated with lots of nasty chemicals. You can use pieces of bark. I've seen people get very creative with their mounting ways. And what I've done here is I've just literally hit some little pinhead nails, like those things into the wood. I've put four in there just because I tried it with three and it wasn't quite enough. So I've left them sticking out slightly because that's what I'm gonna wrap my wire around and attach my plant to it. And the other thing that you will need is something to hang it up on the wall, assuming you are mounting it on the wall. And I've just used these little picture, picture mount things. Again, I'll link them down below but you want to put them on before you mount your plant. And this is the mistake I made when I mounted my staghorn fern. I was just kind of having a trial, playing about, and I was like, I'll do that later. And now I know that it is gonna be quite difficult to get those on there. So yes, I would recommend doing that before you do anything else. I didn't use an electric drill or anything like that. I literally just screwed mine in using a hand, a hand screwdriver. Is that what you call it? I don't know. But that's what I did. And that's the only prep really that you need to do. And then you also need to get, I'm using fishing line, just transparent fishing line. I did try with just normal transparent thread as well, but I don't think that was quite strong enough. And considering it is gonna be holding quite a lot of weight, I would recommend using fishing line. One thing that I forgot to mention that you will definitely be needing as well is sphagnum moss. And then apart from that, you just need a pair of scissors and a plant. As I say, most commonly people do mount staghorn ferns because they look really gorgeous and the big fronds here kind of grow over the moss and mimic the plant's natural habitat. And that's why I say you can do this with any epiphytic plant at all. An epiphytic plant is basically just a plant that in nature will grow on another plant, like on the side of a tree as opposed to in the soil. And a lot of the time ferns come potted in normal houseplant pots. And although, yes, they can grow okay like that, it doesn't actually actually replicate their natural environment in the same way as if you grow them like this. So yeah, I'm going to start off by using, I've got a couple of ferns that I would also like to mount, but I'm going to start with this bird's nest fern, which is really gorgeous. I love the texture of it and I think it's going to look really beautiful when it's on the wall next to this one. I'll just put my camera down a little bit so you can see see better what I'm doing but I'm just going to start by taking it out of its pot and I did give it a really good water last night so I'm hoping it should be a little bit easier to handle. The camera that I'd set up to film from this angle actually didn't record so in these shots you'll see me working with a crocodile fern but I thought I'd include them so that you could get a better idea of what I was doing. Sometimes if the soil's very very dry it can just make it a little bit trickier so that is what it's looking like and I'm just going to get my first bit of wood and you don't have to get all of the soil off them. I think a lot of the time people literally go crazy and they take all of the soil away. But what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to, you kind of just want to turn it, not turn it inside out, but just kind of get it a little bit flatter. So I'm going to remove a little bit of the soil flattening the roots out a little bit, just spreading them. So yeah, it's looking like that. And then when you pop it onto the board, it's going to sit just a little bit flatter. As I say, with ferns, it really doesn't matter if there is still a bit of soil on there. You just want to make sure that you're not literally taking it in its pot and putting it on top because that's that's not really going to do anything for the plant. So yeah, I would say I would say I'm pretty happy with how this is. Cool. And once you're happy with that, you're just going to put that to one side for a moment. And 
I find it easier to tie the fishing line onto this before I put the moss on. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm not going to cut the fishing line at all. I'm just going to leave it as one long piece that's attached to the reel so I can essentially work off that. And you just want to tie a really, really, really secure knot to one of these little nails that you've hit into the wood. I tend to tie the knot about three or four times just to make sure that if for any reason one knot comes undone, the whole thing's not going to unravel. So it's a little bit fiddly. I'd say the knot tying is probably the fiddliest part of this whole process, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it, yeah, four or five knots. Right, so I think that feels fairly secure. And although this is the long bit that I'm gonna be working off, the one that's still attached to the reel, I'm not gonna cut this one the little one there that you could technically trim back. I'm not going to cut it just yet because the last time I did this, I actually found it quite useful to have that bit if I needed to tie it to the other bit at the end, if that makes sense. I'll explain it as we go through, but that is personally what I would recommend. And then you're just going to take some of your sphagnum moss. So I'm going to just take a very small handful, probably about that, and just spread it onto your board. It really doesn't have to be a lot, just something for your plant to be able to sit on and absorb moisture from. And once you've done that, you can just pop your plant on top. And obviously, if you do want your fern to be kind of like slightly tilted upwards, for example, which I know a lot of people do because it is how they naturally grow, just clock where you have put your little attachment to hang it on the wall so that you can make sure to kind of direct it that way, if that makes sense. But once it is on there, you just want to take more sphagnum moss and essentially just kind of wrap it around the roots of your plant and just kind of place it on. It's obviously not going to be secure for the time being. You're just going to have to hold it there and then you fasten it afterwards. And when you're doing this, just make sure that you're not completely covering the little nails that you've put into the wood because you want to use them to be able to wrap your thread around. So Although, as I say, I should really be using a slightly bigger piece of wood, but I'm working with what I've got today, but I'm just kind of noting where all of the nails are so that I can still get to them when I come to secure it all. And once you've done that and you're happy with that, obviously, as I say, it's not secure at the moment. You're just going to take the other end of your fishing line. I'm going to work in an anti-clockwise direction and I'm right-handed, so I find it easier to have this on my right hand side but obviously depending on which way you're working you might find it easier another way and getting started with this bit is always the hardest bit once you actually get going it's a lot easier so I'm literally just gonna wrap once around don't worry about the placement too much for now just make sure your wire is going over the moss I'm just gonna wrap it round a couple of times and then once you've done that you can start turning the wood because again for me I personally find that easier and as you go around, you want to use all of the nails that you've put into the board as a place to kind of loop your fishing wire around because that just makes sure it's being supported from every single angle on the boards. And as well to make sure that it's not just being held from the base, you can go from like one nail on one side directly across, they don't have to go in order. So for example, instead of just going round and round, you can literally come right up and over there because again, that just offers it a bit more support. Yeah, and again here I'm just going straight over the top so I'm almost my wire is almost touching the top of the fern and when I did my staghorn fern and I was using the thinner wire that wasn't actual fishing line it was just like clear thread or something like that I actually finished wrapping tied my knot and then did the whole thing all over again to just kind of make sure that if one bit of string was to break then the other one wouldn't but to be honest, with the wire I'm using now, this feels so much thicker and more secure that I don't think I'm actually going to worry about that for this. And I feel like this is pretty secure, so I'm just going to take my thread back round to the place where I started, where I've got those kind of off-hanging bits. I'm just going to hold it up and I'm going to see how it's doing. So yeah, that feels, that feels pretty secure to me. And then <laughs> this is the this is the only kind of tricky part. When you get to here and you want to tie your knot to finish it, what I find really helps is to try and tie kind of a single knot around that nail, but then also use the bit that you didn't chop at the beginning to help tie a knot as well, so that it's just really, really secure. And then you've got kind of two pieces of string that you're working with. I just find that that works a little bit easier. Again, I'm tying five or six knots just to make sure it is really held in place should one come undone. And there you go. 
I think that looks so gorgeous. And again, texture wise next to the other ones, I think it's gonna look so, so, so pretty. And when it comes to watering them, I mean, I just try and keep the moss fairly hydrated so you can kind of take them off the wall however often you need to. Give them a soak or give them a water down from the top. But because they have got that sphagnum moss there as well, it does just help to keep the moisture locked in. But yeah, I really hope that you found this video useful and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.